Hello everyone, welcome back to AITaekwon.com. My name is Sumit and today I am here with my new video in Salesforce integration topic. So before we dive in and uh, I'll explain today's video with you, I'll explain, I'll tell you about today's video, today's topic. If you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also don't forget to ring the notification bell icon to join our community and stay updated with all the awesome content upcoming your way. So in today's video, we will be going to talk about that how can we pass the JSON using Apex REST web service in Salesforce. As all of you know that JSON is a lightweight data interchange format which is commonly used to transmit the data between a server and a web application. So in Salesforce, we can pass the JSON data using Apex Salesforce property programming language. Usually we can say that the third party developer from the third party application, whenever any request will be made by the third party application to the Salesforce, and if that request has been made in a, in a JSON, so how we will be going to pass that request in Salesforce Apex REST web, web service class, and we can process further. So in today's video, I will be going to show you that how can we make a request from the postman to Salesforce, uh, to Salesforce in order to add a new account record. And uh, in Apex Web Service, we'll be going to pass that JSON. Uh, the request will be made by the postman to Salesforce for testing purpose. So let's begin today's session. Let's, to, uh, let's begin today's video. And for this, first of all, we have to switch to our Salesforce org. And let me share my Salesforce org. So this is my Salesforce org. And uh, I have already established a connection. And to, in order to know more about that, how can we make a connection request from Postman to Salesforce and, uh, and, uh, and receive this information and wait for the response and the response returned by the Salesforce in the form of a JSON itself, access token instance URL. How do we establish a connection between Postman and JSON, uh, Postman and Salesforce using REST API? For that, you can go through my previous videos. I'll share the link in the description below. That will help you to process further to, that will give you more update about the in, in integration, Salesforce integration with third party applications. So we'll continue from here onwards. And as you can see, we have already made a request. When I send a request, when I make a request to Salesforce, you can see, I received a confirmation request from Salesforce. I made a request to Salesforce for the connection request. And once the connection will be established, once the connection established successfully, we will wait for the response. And once we wait for, once we receive the response, you can see we'll be using this access token and instance URL for further processing. But before we begin, we have to create an Apex REST class. So I'm going to create a new Apex REST class and let me give this name as Apex REST new test class or Apex REST new class because I've already created a couple of classes. So that's why I name it as Apex REST class. Let me refresh this because I did that earlier. So let me refresh it one more time. The developer console and and now let's create an Apex class and Apex REST new class. That's the name of my class. Apex REST new class. And you know that in order to make this class, uh, in order to make this class publicly global, so I will be using a global keyword, global. And also in order to convert this class to an Apex REST web service class, I will be using at the rate REST resource URL mapping is equals to slash Let's say I label this as create account. Create account. So at the rate rest resource. Now uh, I will be going to create a HTTP at the rate HTTP uh, at the rate HTTP post method because we would like to add a record. So global static uh, global static string do post. Because the response will be in a string by default. Uh, by uh, right now, I'm just returning null here. Now, 
whenever we'll be going to make a request from postman to json so that response will be sending in a json format and that uh, so that request we have to parse here so how do we do that so for this i will be going to create one string json string is equal to rest context dot request dot request body dot to string so whatever is the request made by the postman or the third party applications to salesforce that information we convert into a string now we have to uh, we have to store that information in uh, we have to store that information in uh, in account because we would like to add a new account record so therefore what i'm going to do i will be going to create one wrapper class so whenever we want to pass the json so it's a it's a rule you can say that whenever we want to pass the json it's we always have to create one wrapper class for passing purpose in order to pass that so for that what we'll do i'll just create a class here so i'll just create a class here public class public class and label this as account data public class account data that's a class name and in this class name i'm going to create two variables public string name and public string industry public string name and public string industry so uh, we can add one more field actually let's say public string phone so three variables i uh, so this uh, this wrapper class so that's a wrapper class wrapper class and this wrapper class contains three param three variables now in order to pass the json in order to pass this json based on the based on this apex class based on this wrapper class so i will be creating one prop i will be creating one variable account data and i label this as account data as account data and we have to deserialize the json so in order to deserialize the json we use account data system dot json dot deserialize deserialize and i will be deserializing the json string based on according to account data dot class so here what we are doing this statement we will be deserializing the json string so this is important to understand what will be what is happening here so let me let me mark it properly so that i uh, that you guys can understand where are we right now what i'm what i'm talking about here is so basically i'm just focusing on this string and what happened in this string is uh, basically will be deserializing the json and when you say uh, like here in this case what we'll do we'll deserialize this part we are basically we are passing this okay so we will be passing this and if you want we can use try and catch block to catch the system dot json uh, uh, system dot json exception if it is needed if it is required we can go for the uh, we can add the exception handling also but we will be parsing the json we have passed here and for this what we'll be doing we use this statement this block so this statement is going to pass now it's showing an error let's see what the error is it's showing out here it says uh, expression cannot be assigned so what's the problem let's check it out we have account data and make sure that the class name is, should be exactly same so account data here account data account data is equals to account data system dot json dot deserialize json string dot a comma account data dot class okay so the issue here is basically i missed that it should be in this format because we are going to create a variable of account data type class just like uh, we will be going to create a new instance or new variable you can say of uh, account data wrapper class so i just create this account data wrapper class and account data is equal to account data system dot json deserialize now the next step is uh we would like to add a new record so therefore i'm going to create account a is equals to new account and now we have to add so a dot name is equals to account data dot name so actually when we deserialize at, at this point of time what happened when we deserialize this so whatever is the string we are going to pass from the third uh, from the external application that would be that will store the very values into these variables and we'll be using these variables in order to store the values into 
to map the values in our uh, in actual objects. So a dot phone is equals to account data dot phone field and a dot industry is equals to account data dot industry account data dot industry and once it inserted successfully i just write insert a and we are going to return a string message so i'm just going to return a message here uh, which says string message and return is let's say account created successfully with id colon plus a dot uh, single quotes plus a dot id a dot id so this is a complete uh, apex zest code now how we are going to test it and we'll uh, now let's have a look that how can we send the information how can we make a request from j uh, from postman to salesforce for this one so in order to do that we have to write a code here the method will be post method because here you can see the method is post method we would like to add a record post method now the url will be our instance url so i'll just click on this instance url and uh, i'll just click on instance url and it will open that url and here what i have to do is we need to add slash services slash apex rest so i just write here slash services slash apex rest and we need to provide the class name uh, basically the the url mapping is create account create account now in the headers uh, i'm going to write here header as let's say uh, authorization and authorization will be done authorization authorization will be done based on bearer and we require bearer we, we need to pass access token so this is the access token which i will be going to pass here we have to pass here bearer and the content type this is important the content type is equals to application json so in this example in this video i will be going to show you that how can we send the data from postman to salesforce apex rest Work service class in the json format and we have to pass it in the next in the next upcoming videos i will be going to show you that how can we pass the J, how can we send the information or the request in the form of how can we send the body in the form of xml and how do we pass the XML in Apex REST Web Service Class? So that also will be going to see in our next video, in upcoming videos. Now we have to pass the body and make sure when we click on check, make sure that will be in JSON because if I just switch to XML, it will show an error message. The reason is here the content type is application JSON and the body we are sending is in an XML format. So this should be exactly matched. Now, what body we are going to pass here? What should we write here? So here, uh, we will be going to make a request and the request will be like uh, what request we have to make. We have to make a request in the form of name in a JSON format. And uh, I'm going to send the information in the form of JSON. Name is equal to, let's say, AI tech one comma phone phone colon comma industry industry yeah industry i'm going to top type here as let's say technology and now when i'm going to make a request for this one so as you can see uh we'll be making a request in a json format and in order to know more about this that so i just write system dot debug json string so i just want to see that the response we have received that response will be in a json or queue so let me save this first yeah it's saving it out and then once it gets saved then i'm going to make a request here so yeah it's saved successfully without having any error now let's make a request and test it so when i click on send button you can see i got a confirmation message here account created success successfully with id that means a new record has been created successfully so let's check it out i verify this first of all a new account has created successfully with the a tech one phone number and when i open this record we'll be able to see that the industry is also added let's go to details and we can see the industry also now uh, i just want to check the logs uh, because I just want to see here the, the response we have received here that the, the, the request which is made by the third, uh, the external application 
will have converted into a string. So what kind of response is handling it out? So I just, uh, let's open this out. And uh, yeah, not this one. This is the one actually, operation one. Let's open this and click on debug. And when I click on debug, so you can see there is, uh, it's successfully get the, it retrieve, uh, basically it access the response in a JSON format and it converted into a string. And this string we are passing here. So the string is, uh, so whatever response is there, that is, uh, that whatever request made by the, <laughs> made by the post, to Salesforce, that will be uh, in a JSON format. We convert into a string and then we pass that JSON string as per this wrapper class. So that's how we can, uh, that's how we can uh, pass the JSON request or JSON body sent by the third external application or third party applications into Salesforce. How do we do that? That's the way how do we perform the JSON parsing in Salesforce using Apex REST web service class. So that's all in, in today's video. In next session, in the, in the part two, I will be going to show you that how can we create, uh, if, how can we create the account and its related contact and you know, the, the information we are going to send in the JSON only, and we'll see how do we pass that as well and create the account and its related contact. So that we'll be going to discuss in our next video. So that's all in today's video. If you like this, you can uh, press the, uh, you can, uh, don't forget to press the like button. You can post your comment in comment box. If you have any custom requirement on, if you have any requirement on training or any support, you can reach out to us on the given numbers or you can visit our website or also you can drop an email to us. Thanks everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.